Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group with today's real estate tip. With me today is Chris George from Attorneys Title Group, LLC. Chris, how are you doing? I'm good, Scott. How are you? I'm doing great. So the topic today, controversial, hmm. but important. How does divorce play into a real estate tra uh, transaction traction? No, how does divorce play into a real estate transaction? What are the things we need to be aware of, um, potential pitfalls, and ways you could be prepared to have a problem-free closing? Sure. Well, I we can look at it from kind of two perspectives, the buyer and the seller. We'll start with the seller because that's usually where it gets a little bit more convoluted. So in Minnesota, and there's this old adage, I'm sure you've heard it, it takes one to buy and two to sell. It's true. You can. You can buy property married and only be the only person in title, and that's just fine. But if you sell, if you're married, your spouse has to sign the warranty deed, and usually some kind of ancillary loan documents do, but the deed is the key thing. Um, and, and issues can arise from time to time. Let's say, uh, you know, John Smith bought some property and was married at the time, and then he was subsequently divorced before he sold it. Well, he was married when he bought, and right. he's single when he sold. But we need to we need to we need to kind of clear up that discrepancy because he's no longer married. We need to know why because spouses typically have to join in on the deed when you sell. So that's where the divorce and the divorce decrees come in. So typically, if you're divorced before you sell, and you were married when you purchased, you need to provide us with a copy of your divorce decree. It's a certified copy, really, because we need to make sure it's official. It's from the county. Yeah, it can't be uh, an uncertified you, one. Because you put it on your yeah. machine or anything. Because you can, you can do whatever you want with that document. Right. right? We want to make sure it's the real thing and nothing's been changed. So we need that staple on that seal. That'll usually tell us it's, it's certified. Um, that'll tell us who actually gets the property. Because, you know, in a divorce, usually if the divorce attorneys are doing their job, they will, you know, say, hey, the parties own this property and it is now going to be owned by so-and-so. And sometimes the decree itself will be enough just to convey title from person one to person two. Mm -hmm. Other times they'll want a quick claim deed in conjunction with that where you would require the ex-spouse to come in and sign a deed deeding out to the spouse who now owns So that's what property. a quick claim deed is, it's just basically re relinquishing their Whatever interest you interest have in the property, in the property. To, okay. the, to the spouse who was awarded the property you know, per yep. the decree. Sometimes a lien is reserved in favor of one of the spouses, and then that lien needs to be dealt with at closing as well. Usually it's a payout of some sort because they might have they might be entitled to some equity from the sale too. Okay. And so, um, you know, we and we want to want to look for all of those things. That's why we want to see the decree up front because then we can anticipate those issues arising and make sure that all that stuff is tended to by the time we close. Well, I think that's where it's really important if you've been divorced that you talk about that mm -hmm. with your title company right away right away your, your real estate agent whoever key you know, pieces so of information people know what's right. going on yep that's right so i have a question so say someone was not married yep bought something got married got divorced then decided to sell yep. but didn't the attorneys for whatever reason didn't deal with it in the divorce proceedings for sure what happens then? so then in a situation like that we would take the decree which shows you're no longer married right that's fine but then we would need a quit claim deed then at that point because okay. You know, the decree won't deal with the property and won't dispose of it, but the quit claim deed will. So the decree just says you're no longer married, and then the quit claim deed from ex spouse to ex spouse will then clean up the interest of the person who no longer owns the property. And if one party says, you know, from my cold dead hands, I'm not and now we have a problem. Okay, then then it's basically Then it's back to the lawyers. Okay. You know, because then what the lawyers would probably want to do at that point is go back to court and say, you know what, we didn't include this property erroneously, you know, as part of the decree, we need to have an amended decree done where we can figure out who gets what. And if any liens are reserved, you know, and the judge the has the ability to, to work through all okay. that stuff with the parties. Okay. Yep. So that's, that's essentially how that works on the sell side. Okay. Um, you know, usually the parties are talking and it's not a big deal. Um, but sometimes it's not. That's why we always want that information. Well, you must know can. different divorce people than I know. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm more. I'm more of an. I'm more of a uh, uh, an optimistic guy when it comes to that stuff. And you just right. hope that everybody's got it. But you know, there are times that have come up where people didn't realize that, especially if you get married after you purchased, then they don't think that it's an issue at all because right. you weren't. It's, it's you weren't. You weren't married when you bought it. So how could my spouse have any interest in the property if 
they weren't married to me when I bought the property. But even so, I think that's a common mis- it misperception. Is. I think so you know, too. People yep. think we all, it was mine before, and it's just in my name right. now. It doesn't apply. Right. And in some states, that might be the case. But in Minnesota, that's not the case. The, the, we still need to know. You know, if you were married, we need to clean that up and show why it show that you're no longer married and that your spouse, you know, has been divested of any interest in the property that might otherwise exist. So, so say you get in this scenario, what's what's your advice to someone who's been divorced? Just get it all all the documents over to you right away. I would, I would. Okay. You know, usually you're going to be talking with your real estate agent first, right? right? So then they'll probably know. Um, and those are questions. Those are good questions for the agent to ask. You know, the people that they're meeting with at their listing appointment or whenever. Not yeah. maybe not that, but whenever they are actually starting to list the thing, they can uh, they can ascertain. Hey, any unique scenarios that we need to be aware well, of? Well, we put it right on our listing contract, yeah, right. like or our listing checklist. Are you you know have you been divorced? Right. It's, and, you know, not to. It's it's something that could torpedo yeah. a transaction. It could be difficult, or, or if nothing else, slow it down. slow it Delay. down by months. Yes, possibly. it could. So, so you want to be sure. Yep. Um, and so. Just the sooner the better. Get that information out to the the agent and the title company, and then they can review it, and then let everybody know what the other requirements will be. Awesome. Now, if you're a buyer, just one caveat kind of on that. If you're a buyer, you can even if you're in the middle of a divorce, you can still go ahead and buy. But be warned that your spouse now has an interest in that property that you just bought. And then whenever you sell, you'll need to clean up that interest after the fact. So could someone buy, still married, get a quick claim at that time? And then get a divorce decree and the quick claim deed after the fact and clean it up? Yeah. Sure. But they would need to do that. Though. They would have to do yes, that. Yes, right, they yeah, would. Yeah, yeah. So if it's at all possible, you wait until the divorce is finalized and then you buy. But that's not always possible. Right. And so if it's not possible, that's okay. But what you need to do after the fact is just know that you'll need to factor that in when you sell. That you'll have to make – because your mortgage is going to show you as a married person. So then whoever's looking at title is going to say, well, where's your spouse if you're selling? And then they're going to say, well, divorced, well, we need the decree and maybe a quick claim deed. So just a, just kind of to be a, an FYI Lots to if you're think buying. about, right? Sure, yeah. Yep. But, you know, the more you can think about up front, the less hassles you're going to have yes. you know, on the on back the, end. On the so yep. so. Um, it's important to work with a title company that's competent and also uh, real estate Absolutely. Agent who's competent yep. and understands these processes. Information is key. Just make sure it's all, you know, it's, it's, you just get that information out to everybody that's involved in the transaction, and that usually will keep things moving along. So. Awesome. So, Chris, if someone wants more information, wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way? Sure. You can call me. My cell phone number is 651-338-6632, or you can email me. My email address is cgeorge at attorneystitlemn.com. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group. Like always, if you want to get a hold of us, you can reach us at 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888, call or text, or as always, 24-7 online at verde-realestate.com. We hope this content has been valuable to you, and if you would need further assistance, please reach out to us. Thank you.